So he's just going to use these Marines and Hellions to slowly chip away at this nothing too extreme. Very, very calm, calm, calm play. And oh hey, when does his push advance? When two more tanks entirely arrive. And where does he plant them? Well, the first one... Well, it looks like he was just target firing that left, but... Um, he's able to kill off this hatchery. He's going to do a little bit of damage. We see some uh, furrowed roaches by z -Puck. He's not going to do anything too extreme. But, um, you know, I'm not so sure I'm liking how far forward he's going to be moving with these tanks. We'd prefer them pulled back a little bit. There we go. Yeah, okay. And this is looking pretty adequate. Again, don't freak out. Don't let your eyes get big and try to sprint up this ramp and, oh, I'm going to kill him now. You did a ton of damage killing this natural expansion. Your natural expansion is up. Notice that Dayfly's even building a bunker. Has tanks resieged here. Is he making marines? Um, looks like he was continuing to make some marines. But for the most part, now just getting two Thors up. Good timing on the Thors. If Mutalisks were en route, that those would be popping out right about now. Still getting an engineering bay. You need turrets plus Thors to really be super effective. But what we're going to see Z-Pucks do is an increasingly popular tactic. The Tunneling Roach Claw upgrade. Oh, yes, so strong. Um, I feel a little bit of back and forth going on here. Now, I want you to note that from an observer standpoint, you'll look at this and you go, Oh my god, oh, this is so close. Oh my, or, excuse me, oh, this was such a great push. He was able to kill this off. Oh, he got to the front. Um, realistically, from a player standpoint, this is a lot more dangerous than it might seem. Any sort of early push is, is freaky. It's very, very scary. Because, you know, watch this little tactic by Zpux. And also note that Zpux is still ahead in food. I mean, really, really not a gigantic advantage. And blammo! One tank down, two tanks down, three tanks down. See ya. Easy, easy, easy. Complete crushing defeat there. And look at this. Still 98 food from Zpux and 73 food from Dayfly. Oh, he's, he's spiking up to 82. That's why I love the fact that Dayfly came back into defense mode. Set himself up, got himself some Thors. We're going to probably be planting some tanks up on this high ground. More Marines coming out. Nah, it doesn't look like any Marines coming out yet. Making nothing but tanks at this point. Perhaps could have cut one round of Hellion to get maybe more tanks up earlier. But um, still a pretty close game. Um, so in, all in all, what I would say is that early game, leading into the mid game, there was this push with a lot of Marines and some tanks to pick off this hatch. But that really just led into this very nicely defended expansion. Very, very cleanly, simply defended expansion. Was setting up the defenses there long, long, long in advance. Z-Puck's doing a nice little tactic, burrowing some of his injured roaches while the rest knock down the rocks. And of course, this SCV starts the supply depot just in time for him to go, Oh yeah, I really should be freaking out now. And the tanks get pulled back. Very, very difficult spot to be in as they fly. It's, I mean... Convenient that these missile turrets are up. Dayfly, good planning, trying to get this bunker out early on. Some Thors here, sieging really far back, not getting too over eager with the siege, because that's a very easy way to lose everything. Is if you move too far forward, oh Jesus, yeah. Again, a big difficulty with mech is about at this stage in the game, you'll feel this, regardless of the mech opening that you do. That oh my God, yeah, ton of roaches. Very easy to bust into my front and just straight up kill me. Dayfly letting his money get a little bit high, but that happens. Obviously, it's it's a problem. You know, want to sort that out. More barracks going down. Ooh, tech labs going down. And this is also a increasingly common play with mech. Um, instead of going pure mech, very StarCraft 1-esque style players have been loving getting um, these barracks to get marauders out. Just uh, enough marauders to be able to keep these roach numbers very, very low. And more nice tactics by Dayfly, but of course, tank siege up here just have such good positioning and such good range on blistering sands that it can't last for too long. And you know, t t to be honest, this is something I love about watching Z-Pucks play. He just has such a good macro. I mean, he, he has actually never been really behind in the food count all game long, despite having lost his natural. And look, doing all this abuse, this tactical interplay at the back and the front. But again, this is when tanks did 60 damage, and now they have the upgrade, so they do 65 damage. Brutal, brutal, brutal stuff going on here. 
Um, and another command center getting thrown down. Yeah, Hellion. Uh, feeling a little guilty he hasn't destroyed the destructible rocks yet. But this is just a very, very solid little opening. And then he's transitioning into this. And uh, notice how the mech, this mech play, sprinted forward, did a push, and as it pulled back, it had these three factories that were really defensive factories. These were the, I'm going to be able to make some tanks factories. And then we're going to have a little timing push set up here. Uh, is Dayfly getting uh, upgrades? Oh yes, he already has the plus one infantry upgrade. How interesting that he only just now finished these barracks, yet in the meantime he was upgrading this plus one all along. And he even upgraded um, the other unit producing structure. He also upgraded his factory plus one. And here comes the big push. He has a few marauders in there. And look at the tank count, how huge it is. And of course some Thors in there. And this is looking like a standard mid-game push, a sort of mid to late game push. We see Z-Pux, he's going to try to do some unburrow action. He is going to be able to pick off a lot of tanks right away. But in unseaged mode, these siege tanks still do a lot of damage. And a few of them do siege up. Even the support of just a few marauders is enough to be very threatening. And wow, look at how Z-Pux's food just plummeted there. That was just gigantic. Has a lot of drones here. Perhaps oversaturated in the drone department, but... um. As we see reinforcements with tanks and more reinforcements with marines, marauders, all that good jazz. There's very little that Z-Pux can do. And his front does eventually fall down. Um, so, very nice little push here that happened. A little transitioning. Two factory tank into super defensive mode. Not overreacting in the slightest. Um, just got two Thors. I love the timing of these Thors. Would have been perfect to deal with any Mutars. Should those Mutars be coming? And of course, tons of Marines, Marauders, tanks, all just streaming towards his opponent's base. And good game. And I really, really liked the way that that looked. I love anything that has a little bit of aggression and leads right into some sort of more stable mid-game period. So we are going to have the delight of watching a second game. We're going to see something a little bit different. Uh, is this the Z-Pucks Dayfly game? That's the one that had the lag. Okay, yep, there it is. Um... So we're going to load up this next game on Steps of War. It's going to look a little bit similar. Um, <clears throat> but again, we like a little bit of variety. We might be going through this one a little bit faster. And then we'll just take some questions. Uh, and I'll go back to sleep. Because again, working out. Oh my god, hard on the body. So here is Dayfly spawning in the bottom left. And we do have our friendly Zbux spawning in the top right. And of course, Zbux always friendly. Look at him, just, good luck, have fun, exclamation point, GG, and excited, exclamation points and caps. Very, very fun stuff. What a, what a true delight. So, of course, we have Dayfly, um, just sending these little workers out, it's going to be continuing to wall in. Um, you always hear me mention Baneling Bus, because, again, it's pretty important cheese. On this map, uh, you're reasonably safe, as we're going to see. Um, yep, there's the Vespine Geyser first. And the barracks second. Oh, second, second, second. Yes, very late. Nice little harass there by Z-Pux. Um, but if, if you're worried about Baneling Bus, you actually can fit a full another structure behind this supply depot. So I'm pretty content with those sorts of wall-offs on this map in particular. Um, but, you know, considering you are going refinery gas, important to scout your opponent early on, see what's up. And he does see an early pool a lot earlier than this barracks. They do look like they were at the same time, but normally this barracks is out a lot long before the, the spawning pool is finished. So, of course, Z-Puck's doing the same little steal. Cool, we're going to see uh, the chance of some repetition, or not. Um, but either way, the barracks finishes, and notice it finishes right around the time that 100 gas rolls in. So that means Dayfly will be able to start that factory whenever he notices, because he really should have started that factory earlier on. That is a misstep. <laughs> Come on, Dayfly, Dayfly, don't make me look bad. Yep, there's the factory going down. Ordinarily, ordinarily, you go refinery, barracks, and then you get this factory before the supply depot. Um, and then you end up making just one marine. You can even try to cut the marines a little longer. That's how to get the factory out super, super fast. Um, so, we note that in that first game, this refinery wasn't able to be taken early on by Dayfly. Z-Pucks did have that one stolen. 
Um, but Dayfly um, is instead of getting that very early second factory, is just getting that gas instead. So we're gonna see. It looks like a reasonably timed second factory. Two marines out. Z Puck's trying to do some little uh, juke in action with his zerglings. Another marine en route for Dayfly. Um, and again, this Hellion stuff popping out. Now this is just a, a little bit funky looking by Dayfly. I mean, if we go over here to the Z Puck's base. We see the Z-Pucks, oh my god, he is doing a Baneling bust, sort of. He let his Baneling nest get scouted, and then he canceled and went for a lair. Ooh, very fancy. And look, see, here's the bunker going down. You can easily put a bunker up here, and you can put another um, structure up here to, to complete the wall off. Dislike.